All right, welcome back. Another glorious market Mondays. That's a fact. A lot going yeah. on in the world, a lot going on in the market. A lot has happened since we last saw each other. It's a fact. It's a fact, man. <laughs> Met so, a few people. That is also a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start there. Take take the lead. <laughs> Coming to you. Minute. In a New York minute, anything can change. In a New York minute. I mean, we already won there, but you don't know who we know. That is a fact. And now, you know, that sometimes you fact. get to show them when you know a little bit. Yeah, actually, I, that's fitting that you're wearing that sweater. Was that done on purpose? God does a few things <laughs> intentionally, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. Before we get the show started, definitely got to give a shout out to, to BD. It just goes back to the power of relationships. To BD, we, we referenced him during the Steve Harvey interview. He's the head of business operations for Steve Harvey. Brilliant young man. I think he's like 28 years old, 27, 29, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he was in New York. So he hit us up like, yo, I'm in New York. Let's, let's get some drinks. Let's you know, get some food. So we um, we went out with him and he just happened to let us know that the next day uh, was going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony with Robert Smith and Steve Harvey and everybody else that was there. Charlemagne. So, Chris Tucker. Charlemagne. Uh, so, you know, just you got to be at the right place at the right time and sometimes you just never know um so robert smith is somebody that we've been trying to link up with for a long time so anybody that doesn't know who robert smith is he's the richest black person in american history um worth about six billion dollars so kanye i know that's gonna come i think they're neck and neck but i don't know the valuation of yeezy that's kind of a little murky but Let's just say that Robert Smith is the richest. If not, I think Robert has a hit. one or two. Yeah. They're, they're top two. No, no disrespect to Kanye. Yeah. But long story short, um, it's a good story to tell. So it was in it was in the projects. And yeah. Because when he sent me the he sent me the text, and I'm like, I'm like 121st <laughs> and First yeah. Avenue. We, we looked I'm at like, each other like, y'all know where this is at? I'm, I'm like, not from there, but that is treacherous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now they didn't know either. So, so they so to, to be from Atlanta, so he's like, nah, I'm not really familiar. That's I'm, just the address. I'm like, this is the address. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I like it even more. <laughs> so we got there and um, dope, dope vibe. Um, you know, prostate cancer is the number one killer for black men. Mm -hmm. So um, Mr. Smith, you know, he, he's a philanthropist. So he put a lot of his own money into um, setting up a mobile van unit. Um, and it, the good thing about it is previously for prostate cancer, you had to get, you know, examined with a finger going up your, your a cavity wrist. a cavity examination which, that? which stopped a lot of people obviously exactly. for obvious reasons yeah. but now you can actually get it through a blood test mm -hmm. so it's a lot less invasive a lot more comfortable and um, he put a lot of money behind that and they have mobile vans that's going to the communities uh that people you know and that's why I, obviously he did it where he did it at because you know a lot of times people in low-income neighborhoods don't go to the doctors so the whole thing was about prostate cancer so long story short, we got a chance to meet him. And the first thing he said, well, first of all, shout out to Steve Harvey because Steve Harvey called us over. He's like, yeah, you better come right now. Like, he did like, this. Like, this is exactly what he did. We looked over. Good looking out. We looked over. He did this. He's like, come here now. He's like, now. Right now. We're going to do this right now. So he's like, he like, yo, he's like, he introduced us. Before he even got a chance to introduce us, Charmaine was there too. Charmaine about to introduce He was like, Robert Smith said, he's like, I love y'all. He's like, I love y'all. Y'all platform is amazing. I love y'all. So, dope. so I, I watch y'all content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was amazing. What? That was amazing. And, um, you know, we got a chance to build with him and stay tuned. That, that's all I can stay tuned. Stay tuned. But, it's called stay tuned. And, and uh, importantly, like that was incredible. The story is incredible. The fact that we got to meet, but make sure that y'all get tested. Right. Like we Prostate said, it's, it's the number one killer. Of blood. They said the age used to be 45. I'd say everybody by 40 should be getting tested. We want to keep ourselves healthy. Steve said, look, I ain't, we, ain't, we ain't trying to lose anyone, right? So get tested, yeah. especially, right? If we're giving out all this information about financial wealth and financial literacy, if we don't have our health, we won't even be able to use any of it, any of the knowledge, any of the resources, any of the money. So make sure y'all get tested, please. Very, Black man, please do that. Very important. And uh, the last thing I'll say is shout out to Steve. So I was talking to him for a little bit and I'm like, yeah, your interview went viral. And this is what he said out of his own mouth. He said, in 30 years, I've never had an interview do that for me. He's like, I never had an interview ever, ever. do that for me. And even Tabidi was like, he was like, he told him like, um, does all their stuff go viral like this? Like he was <laughs> like, yo, he was like, it just went viral. The deal flow has been crazy. He's like, what was the number, 50? Yeah, he was just like, he told me out of his own mouth. He said, I never had any kind of content like do that for me. So yeah. extremely humble and I clipped that up. Yeah, shout, shout, shout <laughs> out to the, shout out to the press page. deck. 
Shout out to Paige, who's the head of his uh, foundation, Sea Valley Foundation. She was like, can I just punch you out on the chin real quick? And we are kind of like, what? She's like, look, my emails over the past two weeks, I've never seen anything like this. So thank you. I haven't watched the interview, but every time somebody sends a clip for me, I feel like I've got it all in its totality. So yeah. shout out to Paige. And shout, shout out to Just. He, he was there. Like I said, it was the last Just always, yes, yes, yes. He was in New York, so he told him to pull up. So once again, you never know. Do your work and, um, you know, good things that happen to you. And uh, it, was a, it was a good week for us, but it was also the week for Ian. Uh, he was on 85 South. So, you know, that, uh, that's a big, big yeah. platform. Over 120,000 views, I think, in day one. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't got the chance to check that interview out, check it out. It's on 85 South's YouTube channel and all podcast outlets. Shout out to 85 South. That's our family. Yeah, shout out to Chad. Yeah. Shout out to Kat. Shout out to, to DC. Shout out to Carlo. Oh, shout out so, to yeah. Pico. Um, Shout out to the whole family over there, man. Ryan, what up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very good people, family. So, uh, and yeah. the very spirited debate on. And I was telling you before we were live, like even I want to give Fly credit because I saw on YouTube people like, man, Fly needs to be quiet. But I want people to know from a producer standpoint because I know people may just see him as talent. He told me he like, hey, I'm going to give you a lot of pushback because most of the interviews that I saw you do, no one ever refutes anything that you say. And it made for a great conversation and made for great content. So like when people are producing and looking at it, I didn't want them to say, hey, well, he wasn't trying to listen. And the first five minutes when you talked, you can see that he knew a lot. Like he was the first person I ever heard mention Ikenashi that was in talent. Please write that down, down, Ikenashi. So it is a way to determine train with inside of a candle, which takes away all the noise. So when he said it, I was like, he's been studying for real. So uh, amazing interview. Um, I want you guys to check it out. I do have a question for you guys, though, because you don't get enough credit for this. How many networking events in the last four years have you guys been to? A lot, a lot. Every opportunity. And yeah. that, that's the crazy thing. It's like whenever you get an opportunity to go, like we found out about this Steve Harvey and, and Robert Smith thing, um, like midnight, the night before. And he's like, it's at two o'clock tomorrow. And I'm, 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 I'm going to be there at 1.30. I'm like, I'm going to be there at 1.30. Yeah. I'm going to beat you there. Um, because you <laughs> But how many prior networking? Okay. And I want to do this for the audience. How many interviews plus networking events have you done the last three years? Hundreds. To get to this one moment. Yeah, hundreds. I don't even know hundreds yeah, though. Hundreds, like literally three a week, probably three a week. It just and even before this, when I was a financial yeah. advisor, I used to go to networking events all the time in the city and just randomly. It'd be painful for me because I'm not really even an extroverted person like that. But you know, sometimes you gotta do things that you don't want to do. You gotta get out of your comfort shell. So. I used to go to just the city when I was just, when nobody knew who I was and um, just go to a random happy hour networking event in Manhattan and just hand out my business cards. And, and um, you know, it's something that a lot of times people don't want to get out of their comfort zone. You have, there's nothing like face-to-face -face interaction. That's yeah. the last thing I'll say about this. Like, and that's one thing I learned, I heard 50 Cent say that, like drink champs, Nori was trying to get him on drink champs for a long time. And he was like, the reason why he did it when he finally did it, he was like, Nori ran down on him in Miami, showed him the numbers, and he was like, all right, I'll do it. He was like, you know, if you catch me face to face, it's hard for me to say no. And, um, you know, even, even dealing with Robert Smith, you know, we had emailed um, mm -hmm. some of his associates and, you know, it's just nothing happened. And it was like, you know, not, it's not a good time, da, 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 da. And as soon as we saw him face to face, he's like, yo, I love y'all, whatever y'all want to do, let's do it. Let's, let's put it on the calendar. So I say that to say that face to face interaction, even though we're in a virtual world, we're in a Zoom world, I get it, but there's still nothing like the face-to-face -face interaction. And in order to get that, Wall Street Trapper, I tell that story all the time. That's how we met. He flew to a networking event that we had in Houston, introduced himself to me face-to-face, -face, in person, and the rest is history. Um, so there's nothing like that face-to-face -face interaction if you're trying to really get to know somebody or, yeah. or build a relationship the, the answer is there, there is no number to quantify it right like i always say this man like and i said it there at the event and justin catch, captured it on camera i was like it's about being in the right place all the time so if i even hear that somebody's gonna be somewhere we're going and it, it was interesting because a lot of people were recognizing us and we were like all right that's dope man i appreciate y'all coming y'all know who's coming here and so most people were like i heard steve harvey's here i'm like yeah he's here but you know we got to explain who else is going to be here and so that's a process too. It's like, now, nah, do y'all know who Robert Smith was? And so now we're interacting with the people in the community to explain what he is and how important he is. And they're like, oh man, see, that's why I need y'all. So just being in the right place all the time, man. If, if Shadi can't make it to an event, I'm going. Most times we go together, but I'll be like, yo, I'm gonna go.
because you never know who's going to be there. You never know who you're going to encounter. You never know what that relationship can do. The prime example of that is like when we went to uh, St. John's concert. From that St. John album release, we met Dave and United Masters. Obviously, we had a relationship with them. We also met Benny Pugh. Uh, from that that meeting, he introduces Kenny Burns. Now, Shadi got a segment on Kenny Burns. So, so yeah. you never know, man. Just get in the room. Be and in the room. It's also important for us to to um, highlight and appreciate the entrepreneurs. Because, like, even when I met Robert Smith, he 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 had two other gentlemen that he was with, mm. and he was like, they were they both um, billionaire hedge fund managers as well. And he was like, between between they have a group. I forgot what it's called, but it's Black Fund Managers. I think you have to manage at least $10 billion to be in, in the group. And there was two other gentlemen that was with him. And he was like, between all three of them, I believe, I don't want to misquote it, it, it was like $150 billion that they manage between the three of them. And I'll take that jet, please invite me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, you know, to have them there. And I wasn't even familiar with the other two gentlemen. Obviously, I know who Robert Smith is, but I just feel like, you know, it was a it was a decent turnout. Um, obviously, they wasn't like publicized, but it's in New York. It's in Harlem. It's in like the word gets around. I have a, I have a strong feeling that if it was Kanye West there or Jay Z there, or out of, in ten minutes, it would have been at least a thousand people. If it was Cardi B, it would have been ten. At years. least a thousand, yeah. ten thousand people in the, middle, in the middle of the project. So we have to understand like this is the richest black person in American history. It's not a normal person. We got to celebrate that yeah. the same way more. more. We got to celebrate that more yeah. than we celebrate more. entertainment. Yeah. It's not an everyday thing. Like in the like in the long term, like when people go back and tell a story, they'll say that this never happened. But no, nah, this dude was literally in your housing projects talking to the community. And like we were looking like, yo, man, this is crazy. Where are the people at? So yeah. that's, that's you know, it, it's a yeah. fact, but you know what it, it tells us is that we got a, a long way to go. Because if people don't know who he is. Then, then our job needs to intensify, right? We need to make sure that this becomes a commonality. They need to know him just like they know Kanye, right? Because he's just as, if not even more important. And look how much he gives back. I mean, in addition to, exactly. I think I think Steve May made the exclusive of saying, even for those that he paid their tuition um, at Clark, I mean, he's still wow, wow, wow. on, on a weekly, on more house, uh, on a weekly basis. That rarely is done. Like to have that kind of access to a person all the other charitable stuff um african american institute in washington like biggest donor there yeah we have to herald these people that have made. And let's be honest to manage that much money and then to have the net worth that he does <laughs> this ain't an everyday thing no <laughs> one of a kind hey, hey Ian, I, I just want to mention this before we we, we, we start chopping stuff up uh, you know last week uh we had i had the opportunity to, uh going to see snow allegra and I bought a dear friend of mine. <laughs> so shout, shout out to everybody who-, who You only need one yes. Yes. We gonna get that yes in chat for real. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to everybody that pulled on up, pulled up on us at the uh, the concert. It was amazing. What, what were your takes, man? Shout out to Snow. You know, <laughs> you too cool. Uh, it's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. No, answer that DM to my guy, please. Joe, I love you. Come on. <laughs> it's been a year though. Bottle Wars. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Yes. Stay tuned. Stay, it's, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned in a major With way. the love of snow coming to <laughs> The new reality show. <laughs> Loki, that's uh, why you call Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> this week, big week for EYL. We got my boy Jack Jones. Um, so we was in London. We shot five episodes, I believe, in London. Mm -hmm. And Jack was actually one of the first people I ever connected with. He's a superstar. DJ in the techno space in London, who's huge, huge, huge. He got his own record label, like doing it. To give you kind of perspective on it, he has a residency in Ibiza, and the person that he shares a residency is Idris Elba, because um, Idris Elba is a DJ also, if you didn't know. So Jack Jones is a huge, huge, huge in London, um, but it's a super dope conversation about the music industry, about he brought up some points that I never even thought about about artists selling their catalogs and looking themselves as far as like how VC firms look at startup companies, mm -hmm. um, valuations. Extremely, extremely powerful conversation about music, scaling, business, um, tech. So, all my folks out in London, check it out tomorrow. That's going to be a big one. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, New York, 12 o'clock AM in London. 
Um, and we got a series of London uh, interviews that we'll be laying out. So this is the second one of the five part series. So shout out to all the UK massive. Yeah, it's a dope one. Yeah, there's, there's no denying that. And I think you're gonna love it because I remember I, I remember you saying this, like the record labels are the new VCs, I mean, hedge funds, and like he kind of breaks it down in a very, very specific way. So it makes it clear that the understanding and the analogy between the two. So shout out to Jackson. Jackson, it's gonna be an incredible one. Another yes. one. Yes, another one. Uh, announcement, uh, disclaimer. Uh, yes, 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 yes. First, folks, earners, Red Panda family, we wanna let y'all know about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focus on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Get with Ally so that you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we're all better off with an Ally. Shout out to the folks at Ally. It's called Stay Tuned. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> all right. So do your own research, folks. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important that you do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and what you rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. Please continue to do your own research, continue to do your own homework, share when you find something, and uh, keep spreading the word. Y'all appreciate it. Ian, announcements? Um, yes. Uh, the, the, the last day for the extended stock club sale will be Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central. So I know some of you are like, hey, I didn't get a chance to get in. We're just getting paid this Friday. So uh, I want to give you guys the last chance to get in before I take the price up and, and put in all the new improvements. So the link will be in uh, the chat. Um, Market Monday Live, please get your tickets. Um, you'll get one year access to Stock Club. Um, weekly call with me and everyone in Red Panda. The Sniper Trading Room, you'll get a Q&A session with me in person. Um, I will be giving away 10 assets over liability hoodies. 10 red panda hoodies and stay tuned for next week. I'm going to give away 10 more things and that'll wrap up our Santa Claus tour in Houston <laughs> of things for what we'll give. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Houston. It is going to be amazing. I got on the line with a few artists. So hopefully, you know, we'll have a couple of surprises come through. Shadi and I talked this weekend too. You guys may want to show up. You guys may want to show up. H Town, it goes down April 23rd. Get your tickets. We're going to put it in the description of this video. We also red panda stock club sale. The description of this video as well. Get both, but H Town, we want to see you April twenty third. It will sell out. There's only a few tickets left. Make sure you get it. One year free stock club with ticket. Sure. Nothing else to say. That's undeniable in itself. So. Nothing else to say. All right, let's get into this. So the Yale curve. You talk about the Yale curve a lot. The Yale mm -hmm. curve inverted this past week. Um, what does that mean for the economy and the stock market? A, do you want to just explain what the Yale curve is? Yeah, so when the so let's say if you have a two year bond and a 10 year bond, normally what happens, investors will put more money into the 10 because a longer term investment usually pays or yields gives more. And when it inverts, when the two year begins to pay more, that's when we know there's a sign of a recession. So last year, ironically enough, on a Mark Cuban episode, which was one year from last week. Mm -hmm. We talked about that being the second most important indicator. So the top three indicators are um, quantitative easing from the Federal Reserve. That's gone away. Number two, the inverted yield curve. And then number three, holding in the market for 20 years. So the two curves that matter the most, please write this down, the two year and 10. So that's one pair and a five and 30. So if both of those ever cross to zero or below, and we're going to have a terrible recession. Now, one of them hit last week please put in chat which one it was but if we ha we see the two and 10 year bond drop and the five and 30 drop and they cross underneath that is a sign that a recession is going to come now it's a lagging indicator so it doesn't mean that the next day is going to immediately go into recession it takes around 12 to 16 months for a recession to kick in um, but when i did my analysis i have it at 11 months before we hit a uh, potential recession area in the market so Please keep your eye on that. But those are the two that matter the most. Now, I know Chamal this week talked about the three month and the 18 month is less reliable. Um, it's like the equivalent of trading like on a one minute chart. It's like it can flicker. It's not the most important. But if all three hit, you have a 100% 100, 100 guarantee for a recession. But I look at the two and the 10 and the five and the 30. Those are the two most two parents of the yield curve. Yeah, that's interesting because you said that uh, most people say 12 to 18 months. 
And so I, there's, there's plenty of analysts who are saying that this year could still be a positive year, right? And even if you count that, right, there's still eight months left in this year. Um, so that could still happen and we could still be headed toward recession territory. So you're saying that it's going to get worse? You think the economy is going to get worse? I think we're going to spike up and we can segue into one of your favorite conversations of politics. And then after we have the midterms, because Biden's approval rate is so low, the probability of the Democrats keeping those seats right now is less than probably 30%. And then usually, I want you to, we talked about it maybe last year, but does do we have a greater chance of going into a recession if we have a Republican lead or a Democratic lead? Historically, it's been Republican. So when you study the cycles of everything, you understand given the economic climate that we're in, plus mismanagement of presidential cabinet and some of the economic affairs, the Russian Ukraine situation, quantitative easing going away. When this power grab shifts, I think we'll go up for the rest of the year, but then next year will be pretty uh, tumultuous to say the least. All right. So, let, I mean, Friday was the beginning of the second quarter. So let, let's just, I'm going to give some statistics really quickly so people can understand how, what we look like for the first quarter of this year. So the Dow was down 4.6%, S&P was down 5%, and you know, our favorite, one of our favorites, the NASDAQ was down 9% for the first quarter. However, however, April is historically the best month for, of the year for stocks. Now, March kind of brought us back a little bit. We were way lower than, than 9%, 5%, and 4.6. So uh, the S&P has averaged over the past, uh, since World War II, a 1.7% gain in the month of April. Um, so that's 70% of the time, it, on average, it has rebounded in April, depending on how the first quarter went. Now, the interesting you brought, thing you brought up just now was the midterm election. When there are midterms, I think like 60% of the time, the second quarter usually is down and then the third yeah. quarter is low. Yeah. So these are just conflicting indicators, but it's interesting, right? Because usually, like we said, April is the best month. And we kind of saw that last year a little bit and then May kind of you know went down and we saw June, there was a spike again. So interesting to keep your eyes on. Yeah, and if you're looking at the short-term horizon, that may be scary, but if you're looking at the long-term, one year, two year, three, you're going to be fine. Also, hedge funds have a inclination to buy in the middle of March and towards the end of March. So that's why we started to see a ramping up where January and February felt like we was just like falling off of the Empire built State Building. Mm -hmm. And then March, we took off to the upside. Same with on booking buying. So on Mondays and Fridays after hours is when most um, institutions will begin to buy in the never midday. So when you know they're buying towards the end of that uh, quarter cycle, that was some of the reason we got some of the ramp up, like once the fear uh, and stuff went away. But yeah, keep your eyes over the next couple of months. If you're new to investing, I know this may be scary, but please just hold for the long term. That's the um, we have the we have the same considerations and concerns during uh, the election with Trump and Biden, and everyone was worried, and then we just took off to the upside. So if you hold for the long term, it really won't matter. But yeah, these next three or four months will be pretty interesting to say the least. Yeah, yeah, the, the most most analysts are predicting. Um, anywhere between 0.7 to 1% increase on the S&P. Well, some people even saying that, you know, it could end at 5,100 by the end of the year. But that's still, like you said, if, if recessions are lagged and they go for anywhere from 12 to 6, 18 months out, we can still be in that. So just everybody just be mindful of that. Um, and so another thing, another thing. So I, I know a lot of times people like, can time, when, when should we invest? What's the best time to invest? If you invested, uh, I believe it was February 24th of 2022 this year, when NASDAQ, I, no, the S&P got to a slow, you've actually made an increase on-, on Absolutely. Investment. So, you know what I mean? Like when we talk about watch the charts and then just get your points of when you're gonna buy in, this is exactly what we're talking about. So you could be having a great year right now based on everything that we're saying, even with all the indices being down, if you got in at that point, you're up a pretty good percentage. Absolutely. Okay. And anytime anyone panics, it is your chance to profit as long as you get in at a good price. So for example, like that amazing hoodie Rashad has on. If it went on sale for nine bucks, the upside is infinite because I'm sure it's retailing for 150, 200. Um, everything is about the price that you get in plus length of time that you're willing to hold. So if you better bought, bought at bad price, you, you got destroyed. But the same thing I said in the 85 South interview, I'm like, hey, Tusk is gonna drop to 843. As of today, it was at 1,024. When everyone else is panicking over good assets, you should be looking to buy. 
And that's how you'll be able to make money even when most people are losing in the current market. Yes. And so let's let's go into this. Um, what are some other signals for a recession to look out for when things um, are getting bad? So number one, uh, when valuations of startups are being cut. So like, for example, Instacart, the value got cut by 38% on March 25th. Mm -hmm. The business model of Instacart hasn't changed. And let's be honest, if you're looking at top line revenue or bottom line revenue, that hasn't changed much. But people were chasing. So same with momentum stocks. Everyone was chasing at a high. The same thing was happening in BC and Angel. And uh, other indicator, they have a Federal Reserve uh, uh, probability recession model um, that you can look at. If you just go to Google, you can just put recession probability model. It updates, I think, every two months but it'll tell you the probability in which we have a chance of going into a recession. So if you compare that two year and 10, five and 30, and if you look at the startup vehicles and see how many are increasing in value or decreasing, plus with this probability model and listening to Market Mondays, you should never get confused when we're gonna hit a recession. But those are like the main four that I'll look at to tell if we're gonna have like a full on collapse in the market. Um, interesting. So let's talk about Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla. Um, just actually put a post up the other day that uh, they hit a record with 310,000 cars delivered. Um, that's the closest number that they have that you can gauge off of purchases because they don't they don't actually publish the um, cars that's actually purchased, mm -hmm. but it's the closest number that you can probably get to that. Um, last year for the first quarter, I think it was 180,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, an uptick. And they actually did it um, in an environment where they got off to a slow start at the beginning of this year because uh, I think a factory had closed down in China because mm -hmm. of COVID. And um, obviously they're dealing with chip shortages like everybody else is. And they've had um, some manufacturing issues with parts. Um, so they've had some issues. They got off to a slow start of the year, but they still managed to hit a record and uh, produce 310,000 cars. And they have a new factory that's being built in Germany mm -hmm. um, that they're planning on producing a million cars out of that factory. So obviously we, we talked last week about Tesla potential top stock split, which that looks like that's gonna happen um, for the second stock split in the last 15 months. So how do we feel about Tesla on this on this news? I right, wanna take it first. Yeah, no, I mean, I love it. If, if you look at the past five quarters, every estimate that they've had, they beat it, right? Like even now, even with the, the all those things you said, on their bottom line, the estimate was for 308,000 vehicles going. They hit 310, right? When they did last year, it was like, oh, the estimate is going to be 460,000. They did 500. And so all you see is continuous growth. Anytime you see that in a company, you know it's a strong company. Obviously, you know, Tesla's a strong company, but it's an innovative company too. And so that's why we tell people, like, Stay in this, stay in the stock, hold it. Do not leave, do not leave. So when we saw it get down to 843, there was no room for panic. It was like, all right, this is an opportunity for us to get in. And so even if you were in the position, you can add to it at a lower price. We got to look at these things as opportunities. Like every time we see something go down, I know the common thought is like, man, this thing might drop lower. I don't want to lose even more money. But you got to get that out of your mind, right? We saw it at 1100, it got down to 843. This is your opportunity. Seize it, please. Please seize the moment, please. Yeah, you have to. Um, Eli reminds me of like a weird mix of like Steve Jobs, Kanye, and 50 Cent. Like, and I mean that because not all, all three, it took a long time for get for people to believe in their vision. But once like Elon got a hold of the market, and then the Kathy push definitely helped, right? Because it brought it brought some stability on the hedge fund side. But once he got momentum, he never let it go. Great lesson as well. Whatever benchmark they set, they know that they're going to beat. So that's why for every investor, they're, they're benchmarking against the S&P 500. Because if you have any knowledge, you usually can either match or beat that. Um, and even his use or manipulation of media to keep himself front and center to help propel, it's very Kanye-esque um, in that regard. So I think, you know, one of the greatest entrepreneurs, of course, to, to walk the starter plan and to scale the way that he is. I mean, I, I'm telling everyone you should hold Tesla at least another seven, eight years. Um, I wouldn't let go of that company in, unless he left. Um, they've been on, a, on an amazing tear. Mm -hmm. Even at current price, they should get to 3,500 and some change in a couple of years. 
I'll give you guys an updated number like once they split, but yeah, I have them at least going up three X from here. Please hold for the long term. Please. Tesla. Do us all a favor. We have to keep an eye on the racial discrimination lawsuits. Um, mm. I have been looking at that this weekend. Are you up on that? Um, I was actually looking at the Amazon situation. When you talk about discrimination. The union workers or the discrimination? Union, the, yeah, well, the union situation? Yeah, the president, the, the gentleman, black man who actually led that, first started as discriminatory practices during the, in the workforce, ended up being to a unionization situation. So I, I was like, what's up? What's on here? Oh, it's a lot of lawsuits, actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of lawsuits. Actually, I was, I was doing some research this week. And I didn't really realize how how massive it was. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of lawsuits of people, you know, talking about racial discrimination in Tesla. Um, so I still have to do more research on it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you just Google it, a lot of articles come up. So that's alarming. Yeah, we should call Rachel on it. She probably has the research already. Yeah, that would be great. We need to bring her back. We, yeah. have, we have to look into this. I'm not oblivious. I, I do read Instagram comments. <laughs> yeah, they, they came in with that and his, you know, yeah. South Africa and the minor thing. I'm, I but get it's it. good to know. I mean, yeah. as Kanye said, if, if, if racism was a deal breaker, then I wouldn't be living in America. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, you probably, there, there is no Fortune 500 company that probably has not at some point discrimination. A discrimination lawsuit. Yeah. That's just the harsh reality of it. Not to say it's okay. Right. But like I said, if racism was a determining factor and we wouldn't live in America, this country was built on racism, literally. That's kind of the founding principle. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you know, it, it's one of these things, right? It just is what it is. But I'm definitely interested in learning more about that situation um, and keeping an eye on that. Because Do they have more discrimination lawsuits in comparison to their counterparts? In comparison, I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm just I'm not sure. I'm not okay. sure. The counterparts, like who would be like, their counterpart? Like, like Ford, Ford, Ford GM. GM. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But but then are we really surprised? No, like I said, I mean, this yeah. this America. What do you what do you expect? Um, but another way to actually get Tesla exposure, if you don't want to own 100% Tesla stock, is through ETFs. Mm -hmm. And um, XLY is an ETF where Tesla actually makes up 21% of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon is 23% and Tesla is 21%. So Tesla is a, a very volatile stock. Everybody, or everybody should know that and should understand that. Mm -hmm. It's not your average stock. Um, so if you don't have the stomach for it, or if you think that it's too volatile for you, but you still want to invest in it, then maybe you can go the ETF route and invest in it that way, where you don't have 100% exposure. You just have, in this case, 21% of the portfolio is exposed to it. QQQ, I believe it's in QQQ as well. A couple other ETFs, but yeah. it makes up a, a, a pretty large percentage of 21%. Uh, that's pretty, that's a pretty large percentage. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are familiar with the ARC fund. And so, you know, Tesla's inside pretty much all those across the board. Uh, yeah, but Arc, Arc is. But I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say that uh, Kathy Wood actually sold two hundred and five million worth of Tesla stock last week. So that's interesting too, because that is in almost every one of the Arc Fund ETFs. Yeah, yeah. That was possible, possibly for not to cut you off, for sure, uh, but to take some profits to prevent some of the bleeding that's happening, and the other investments that she's had, and then maybe to salvage relationships and maybe pay out clients as well. A lot of bleeding. Yeah, it's a lot of bleeding. And that's why I try and tell every retail investors on the stock club call, I had the, the honor of having like Dave on. And he said, the only real advantage that we have as retail investors is to be able to hold longer than them. So even when a hedge fund sells on a quarterly, and we've talked about wellwisdom.com, holdingschannel.com, right? But when these hedge funds are selling on a three month cycle, that's because that's the business they're in and clients need immediate results. Like very rarely will you see a client stay with the fund for 15 years anymore. That That's not happening these days, right? So don't, even with that news, don't confuse her profit taking with exiting the position and just saying, I'm completely done with Tesla because we won't, don't want to send like a mixed signal to the audience. But I, th I think it could be because the bleeding has been happening over like the prior seven or eight months, so. Yeah. The power of the retail investor. And, and I think this this is an opportunity to talk about ETFs as well. The reason why, you know, I like ETF, like going back to basketball, um, you know, my son plays basketball and, you know, I was talking to some of the parents and the coaches and I always say, even when I was playing, me, I'm the kind of, even I used to coach actually too. 
I like to have seven or eight players at the most. I didn't really like to have 12 players. The reason why I never like to have 12 players on the roster is that you can't play 12 players. And what happens is that when somebody doesn't play, they get discouraged. And, you know, they it's not good, right? It's not good when somebody's not playing. They could become a cancer. They can just start complaining. And it, it's, it's never a good thing when somebody's not playing. You don't want somebody on the team that's not going to play. My theory, go with seven to eight players, rock out, and everybody's happy. Everybody can get playing time. So, like, with XLY, 73% of their portfolio is in 10 companies. But really, really, they only really have exposure, like, major exposure in a few companies. I mean, Amazon is 23%. Tesla is 21%. Home Depot is 7 McDonald's is 4 Nike is 4 Lowe's is 3 Starbucks is 2 Target is 2 Bookings is 2 TJ Maxx, TJ, I think that's TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm. TJ Maxx is, is one. So really they have like seven companies yeah. that just going to rock out with. And the good thing is that they can make changes. So if one player isn't, you know, performing, you sub them out. So that's the difference. Once again, for anybody that's new, that's the difference between the ETFs and the index fund. With an index fund, S&P 500, they have 500 companies. Yeah. So that's like a whole army, yeah. right? As opposed to the ETF. Really? Yeah, it's like special ops. Yeah, that's like the yeah. infantry. Like that's where it's like black ops. Like they just got seven trained. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot, of yeah. you don't need a lot of marines. Yeah, so, just a few. The illest thing you said is that if you knew, because if people when they start, we started Marvin Mondays. Tesla wasn't even part of SLI. Mm-hmm. Think about that. <laughs> like that literally wasn't even part of the ETF. And so now to even say that that is twenty percent of it, that shows you the vast how vastly things can change. Yeah, and, and the yeah. fact that it's a consumer discretionary uh, ETF and it has Tesla in it, um, mm. which is interesting. Yeah, and I don't have, if I have extra money, I buy a Tesla. Every everyone, <laughs> and Josh talked about it. it's like, hey, depending <laughs> on the classifications, it ends up. Yeah, you know, that's about, yeah. Walmart and Tesla go ahead. Like Gary Payton playing four. <laughs> Stretch four, but hey, you got to get the gains. However, you can make it work. That's I was quote. Uh, Bobby Knight had about Michael Jordan. If you need a center, who do you go? Like draft Jordan, put him at the <laughs> we'll workout. We'll yeah, figure it out. It out. That, that's a, yeah, you put the five best players in, just let it rock. Yeah. Starbucks and Tesla, they go hand in hand, right? Yeah, they're not yeah. on anybody's team. Uh, well, I don't know. Eighty thousand dollars or four dollars, same thing. Yeah, who knows? What's the difference? I mean, and even if you look, I want to give a shout out to uh, Romel Williams. Uh, he sent me this on Twitter. Um, the top five holding of holdings of BlackRock: Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla. Like, mm-hmm. if you guys literally just look at the biggest. ETFs, biggest indexes, top five hedge funds, you're going to see the same overlap. Yo, that's a valuable lesson. I just, somebody posted a clip and it was a Waka Flocka. And he said he became smart with his money when he realized how rich people spent their money. Shout out Waka. Right? So he, Good dude. This is, this is a, a prime Big example. Big crypto right? wallet if, too, boy. If, if, yeah, oh yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. If you just, like, like you take BlackRock or you take Berkshire and see where they're invested and you just said, all right, well, they're pretty wealthy. They're pretty successful. All right, let's just follow their investments. Chances are you're going to do pretty well. You're moving with the institutional money. And the more whales that have those positions, like even for Apple's a primary position for Buffett, and there's Coca-Cola, that has been replaced by Apple. A, it gives a certain level of safety because the drawdown is very little. But when you have BlackRock, Vanguard, all the major funds investing in these like five or seven companies, there's a reason why they're telling you if all hell breaks loose, Neo can go to the ground, right? Certain companies can fall apart. These five are going to stay afloat because if all those institutional investors are there. They're going to keep them up and hold them afloat. They are telling you in the future, which ones they think the most value. And so I'm not trying to have you guys recreate the wheel. Even if you don't think I'm the master investor, go, go look at Robert, right? Go look at Vanguard, go look at BlackRock, go look at State Street, like go look and see what the big players are doing. And they'll tell you exactly uh, what you should be doing. And yes, even if you want growth, because if the market falls 55%, those core five or seven won't draw down that much. There you have it. Um, so there's an 83% chance of a recession in the next two or three years due to Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, will this shape any or form an effect in America? Um, so- or, or the global food crisis, yes. The global food crisis? Yeah, yeah, global food crisis. Okay. 83% chance. My apologies. Um, so not not because of Russia, Ukraine, because of global food crisis? Well, well, the reason the Russia and Ukrainian crisis now puts a lot of pressure on commodities. So like wheat, 
soybean. Um, and and this, this interesting thing about media, this is what I always say, well, the most important things that are, uh, we talked about at the top of the show. Why don't more people know who Robert is? More people know Robert Kelly than they do Robert, right? right? Should not be the case. So when everyone was talking about the Chris Rock and Will Smith thing, and can we please retire that at some point? Biden came out and said, hey, we are going to have a food shortage here in the next two or three years, and no one said a peep. And I'm like, I don't even think presidents are allowed to say that. And it got swept under the rug. And that's why I always tell you guys, like when we're giving this kind of information, and especially in the Steve Harvey interview, Steve said, share some gems that I never heard him share before. Play, pay close attention to those kind of lessons opposed to what you normally hear in media, because the purpose of media in most cases is not to educate you, it's to use your attention for ratings. So because of this fallout, it may not affect us the most, but Africa, maybe Central Europe is gonna get affected but it's gonna make certain commodities go up as a result because of this crisis directly because of the Russia and Ukraine situation. So we have to be very mindful and very, very careful um, of what's gonna happen over the next two or three years. Interesting situation. Yeah. Russia and Ukraine, they stopped talking about that. That We don't hear too much about. I know. And of course they're trying to be civil and work out the talks, but when you have egos clashing like that and then the timing of it and then I mean, if we can talk about it really quickly, now Russia has went to the Saudis and there are some negotiations of if rubles will be taken as payment, which goes to my grand conspiracy theory of like the involvement of crypto being tied to the fall of the American dollar. We have to be very careful because if we come off, because the only advantage that the American dollar has now since we've been off the gold standard is military power and petro dollar acquisition. If we lose what like, our relationship with the Saudis and they don't use dollars to buy oil, we are going to be in trouble. So please read that Ray Dalio book, probably the greatest book on like macroeconomic cycles that you have to read to know where we are. But this is looking like a scary movie. If one or two of these pieces falls apart, it could be tough. So be mindful. I don't want to scare you, but I have to give you the truth. Be mindful. Um, Apple is going to launch a subscription model for the phone. Mm -hmm. How will this hurt or help their business and stock? What, what, is, what kind of subscription is it going to be? So now, opposed to just having the software bundled, they are going to bundle all of the software and the ability to buy a phone. They haven't said what the pricing is, but I think um, at $250 a month, they got 8.3 million people. That'll put them at $2 billion in revenue a year. If it was $200 a month, it'd be at 22 million people, it'd be $4.4 billion in revenue. Oh, $200 so, a month? Hypothetically, this is just my extrapolation. They haven't announced a number yet. That's a lot. But, but what they want to do is take away. Well, wait, wait, wait. No, no, to get, to get this, iPhone, this, iCloud, all iPhone. All products, is, all products and services. And, and bundled in one. Oh, gotcha. That's okay. a lot, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. If you do Apple TV, you got Apple Health. Everything in one. You get the that's phone. I don't think nobody, I, no, no, they can't do that. It gotta be under $50. Has to be of, of course, they'll probably do something under 50, but we have to remember Apple is the number one luxury brand in the world. I know so, people think it's LVMH, but they are, even in the retail space, they sell more per square foot than every other retailer, including Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Um, so they do have an audience that will pay, but, and I think they'll roll out a couple more incentives for sure to get to entice people. But I think if people can pay, and this is also a sign of a degrading economy, when companies, because what they're trying to do is effectively take away the pricing power from Verizon, uh, T-Mobile, et cetera, to be able to give you those deals to finance the phone and tie them in. Um, also, they're doing a deal now with Goldman Sachs to bring in the financial services and crypto. So now you can do buy now, pay later directly through Apple. Now you don't have to go through a third party. So when I tell everyone, like everyone is your competition, not just your immediate competition, like Cardi B, is your competition, right? Um, Apple, Google, Microsoft, great. You have to be mindful of that when you're doing a SWOT analysis of like what your strengths and weaknesses are and what potential threats are there. So now if they offer buy now, pay later, then they have the Apple credit card and they're working on their own crypto platform and you can buy Apple services and an iPhone. Let's say it's 50 a month. What is 50 a month times 19 million people? 
that business alone is worth more than Neo, worth more than Lucid. So, so and that model, right? Rather than paying like the phone provider, you're not paying Apple for the actual. Product. Yeah, you pay Apple directly. Probably you go right to the source and right then to the plug. The same way you would, because I mean, even but, for the iCloud service, if everybody does it, right? Like, yo, you're out of. You have to. You got to get the two ninety nine. Then you run out of two ninety nine. Then you got to go up to the nine ninety nine. Yeah. So that gets bundled in, and then every other so it's for your iPad, your your watch, your Mac. Family. So they will be the service, but. But then they would have to have towers and all that to be service providers because they're not service providers. That's what, that's why you need T-Mobile, Verizon, yeah. because they actually provide the service. So you saying like Apple's going to cut them out and just be service? No, 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 no. T-Mobile they'll still serve as, as the service providers. They're just bundling more of the service to get um, the the flow of business inside and get a bigger margin. Because re remember, even when they first did the deal with AT and T exclusively when the phone first came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they slowly positioned them out and made it non-exclusive. This is a strategy that they've done forever. People just don't see it coming because they're perceived to be a slow, boring company. They're very, like Apple is great at selling you the same product over and over again, but also on the business side, lulling you to sleep and then they rock you like crazy with the dramatic change. So now if they can get that ecosystem to pay them more, and remember, they've already done it with the app store. Hmm. 30% of every business that's on that, that platform. So now if they can cut out a couple providers, and I think also too, the subscription model gives them even more safety to allow them to have less, less drawdown if we hit a recession. So if they can report an extra $9 billion coming in in this 65% profit, they'll probably draw down 10% less than any of their other competitors as a result. So I think it, it's, it's a perfect model given also, the times that we're in. It also bundles into things that you know they probably weren't moving. Right. So like, I don't oh, know yeah. if people have Apple Arcade, right? Yeah. But I know a bunch of people that have Apple TV. Yeah. Also, a bunch of people that have Apple Music. But I don't know how many people do Apple Fitness. And so you bundle all those things in. It kind of makes sense that they're going to get all their products out. Well, yeah, I think Apple, uh, I think Apple Music is $9 a month. Yeah, Family Plan, $14.99. Yep. Then Apple TV, they want an Oscar. Even with that, that's big. quality over quantity. You know, I was, talk I was talking to Amadou when I told you guys last week, and he was like, hey, I think they're going to win the Oscar. Then they did. That kind of got overshadowed with the Will thing. But it's like, they got an Oscar at a faster rate than Netflix did. Mm -hmm. I know that's a small portion of audience, but look how many creators are going to want to push content there now. Now, if the shows get better and the movies get better and they're not burning through them and they have less debt, they may be able to overturn that throne that Netflix is currently on. So if you bundle all that stuff together, and I, listen, if I were them, I'll let Fortnite keep 90% of the money and bring it back on the platform and I keep 10% and keep everybody else. Trust me, people will pay for that subscription because I, I, and that's why I would say comparing businesses, would you rather buy a subscription from Apple or Peloton? I think the new executive at Peloton is great, but they don't have an offer irresistible enough yeah. to entice people to come at scale. I think Apple will. They will. So is this is this going to be good or bad for the for the stock and the company? Absolutely incredible. More revenue. Like th this is a business NFT. If we had keys on, <laughs> you understand me? Shout out to my guy. You understand me? Shout out to my guy. Um, <laughs> this is a business version of an NFT. Like I'm going to bundle everything up where you cannot go anywhere else. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Absolutely and they have the brand brilliant. loyalty that nobody's going to want to go anywhere else. Mm hmm. Guys, so. they did it again. Well, potentially they did it again. Apple, shout out to Apple. Um, okay, let's talk about this Facebook TikTok situation. This is near and dear to you. <laughs> Y'all know the crystal ball not glowing is bright. Shout out to Ally. This should be near and dear. But I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's so what? I'm hearing. All right. So what is that? <laughs> Some slander or something me, like that? You want me to give you the headline? Yeah. All right, here we go. So Facebook has paid the GOP firm um, to Milan TikTok. So Facebook- parent, is, this, is this confirmed? This Absolutely. Is, uh, this is from the Washington Post. So Facebook parent company Meta is paying one of the biggest- Who, Who's owned by Jeff Bezos? By the way. <laughs> it's paying one of the biggest Republican consulting firms in the country to orchestrate a nationwide campaign seeking to turn the public against TikTok. Are they currently doing it now? So it's not, it's not a secret. It had been done like the last four or five months. Yeah, the campaign includes <laughs> placing op-ads and letters to the editor in uh, major regional news outlets reporting dubious stories about alleged TikTok trends that actually originated on Facebook. So 
like dance turns to danger. Like that would be like a headline, right? So yeah, man. We, All is fair and love and war, <laughs> man. It's a war, business is a war. This is business Dirty Mac and 101. Dirty Mac and that's a fact. Yeah, not something that I would do. I don't, I, I don't believe in those type of strategies or tactics, nah. but it is war and all is fear and love and war. And, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I would always say that a superior person, brand or firm does not have to sling mud on another person to make themselves shine. I agree. If, if you, if you are great, other people will see it in you. So that's why, um, when people, people, you, and you said this, people usually throw and try and create competition amongst people that are like ranked higher than them. Like you won't see Jay-Z going down to an up and coming backpack rapper and be like, yo, yeah. you aren't anything, right? You can't fight in that weight class. It's people throw rocks at the throne. Yeah. You know, they throw rocks from the throne. From the throne. Even though I may want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning, namaste, right? Heavy is the crown. You gotta <laughs> get him out with Fiki. But, <laughs> um, and this is a prime example. When you begin to use tactics like this, it's a sign of a, of a declining brand. If that same energy and effort was focused on building a better product or streamlining, like I would be happy if they would just eliminate the usage of bots on their platform and allowing it. Please. But I understand they want it for engagement and they need it, but that's also another sign that the product is not as good. TikTok is an incredibly sticky product. Anyone who's ever been on TikTok, you will spend an hour and a half on it by accident. There are things that I think they could have done to improve Instagram, but instead of doing that, and are the dangers that they're talking about real? Yes. The privacy stuff, yes. Huge issue, right? But most consumers don't care about privacy, uh, any of the China versus US stuff they don't care about. Um, but I think when you see this, or whenever a brand says they are, like back in the day, people was like, this company is the Apple killer that never pans out to be true. So it's a sign that that, that brand is a weakening overall. It also that's why I've been telling everybody to use TikTok over Facebook. Yeah, it shows you the power of influence, right? Like if you have 3 billion people on your platform and you put out a message saying TikTok is a threat to American children, that's national news. Absolutely. And everybody has to cover it. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever where, where it was originated, it's just, that's the headline. You know what I mean? So like pay attention to all these things. Yeah, you have to. Still not, still not sold on TikTok. Why? Y'all paid growing. <laughs> well, yeah. You got the engagement there. Sick. Go you follow Earn Your Leisure TikTok. You got Go follow back some of TikTok, TikTok like please. The heck, no. By the way. Shout out to my guy. I appreciate you, Chris. That's a fact. Right. No, I mean, you got Wall Street Trapper. Yeah. Talk about getting the room. You got to diversify <laughs> your portfolio. For real. You definitely have to diversify your portfolio. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not sold on it. I just, I just, I don't know. It's a better product. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still not. I, I'm, I'm still subscribed not, to it. I, I, I still haven't. Tough. I know that's where our kids are. You subscribe to what? TikTok. What do you mean? Subscribe? Like I'm, I have an account. Every, I mean, like maybe I have an account, but it's tough. Our kids, I, 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 my kids are always on there. You like, always have to follow what the kids are doing because the kids are going to be the ones that spread. Um, they're going to have the viral impact on the parents. So even like when I was huge on Facebook and 05, shout out to Stevie G who got me on it. I told my uncles and everyone about it. They're like, oh, you spend all this time online. What you doing? You wasting your time. I'm like, okay. And then 10 years later, every adult is on. So at some point we're going to have like an adult migration to TikTok. And then they'll leave and they'll go somewhere else. The kids will go somewhere else. But the kids, same in hip hop. Like the kids set what's hot. Not us that are, you know, late thirties or early forties. Like the trends. Yeah, kid, the kids are going to set the trends for what's hot. We just have to be there early enough. But I think even though it's dangerous, TikTok is a superior product for sure. Please put in chat, which one do you like using more, TikTok or IG? The and bot, well, TikTok has bots too, but it's way worse than Instagram. Oh my the God. The vast majority of people don't say Instagram, they lying. They lying. Because I know yeah. that, I know that Caps most, chat. Most, most people that listen to Market Mondays is between 25 and 40. And that age demographic is on Instagram. Really? So, if y'all don't say Instagram, cap, 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 yeah, cap, yeah, cap, yeah, cap, heavy, cap, 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 heavy on the cap, <laughs> sir, cap a lot. But, 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 but TikTok. We walk into Facebook to do a deal. Like, I'm like, well, what do you think about TikTok? Oh, well, <laughs> my TikTok, bad, Mark. TikTok is definitely a good product for sure. Um, yeah. and, and definitely um, follow our TikTok for sure. It is very, yes. it is very, very vital. Very yeah. vital to the success of any entrepreneur these days. So, if you have to only pick one. Instagram, I, Instagram. 
You gotta go with you gotta go with the proven you gotta go with the proven model because anything can happen. That's what I learned. Anything can happen. Um, and Instagram right now is still supreme. TikTok is a very formidable opponent, but TikTok, but Instagram is still number one. Instagram. Do you have a bias towards it because of the elevation of the brand and you think or no? What'd you say? Do, do you have a bias towards it because of uh, the, the brand growth? Because I like I love Facebook, but fa Facebook dead, dead. Uh, like, Facebook is dead, but you can still go viral on Facebook. You can still that's go true. Viral. you can still go viral on Facebook. True. So that's true. Don't don't totally discount Facebook. And Facebook groups are, are big. Big. They're big too. Yeah. Um so May 1st, Red Panda, you guys will finally have access and be able to chat amongst each other. So yeah. yeah we we're gonna do something on a Facebook group too. too. Um, but yeah, I feel like ah, I feel like you got to diversify your portfolio, just like investing. Um, mm -hmm. but I no, nah, it's not really necessarily a bias. I just feel me spending a lot of time on social media, I just still feel like the culture. I feel like the culture is still on Instagram. That's where all the viral moments go crazy. That's where the shade room reigns supreme. That's what made this whole Will Smith and Chris Rock thing go crazy. The culture is still on Instagram. Facts. And I know somebody in comments going like, <laughs> we're going to create a social media for our culture, people have we been do, um, Shout out to my guy, Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes, yeah, yeah, yeah. People and, don't support um, him enough. Um, yes. Yo, shout, shout out to Nate Parker. Oh, what's the name of the app, though? Oh, his? Yeah. I'll get it for you in two seconds. Two seconds. Fanbase. Shout out to Fanbase. Shout out to Fanbase. Yes, we-, we Not an ad, but- not, Yeah, base, yeah, yeah, not an ad. But uh, he was on Ash Cash podcast. We will be building with him soon. Um, I spoke to him a few times, so your brother pro. I'm pro that. I'm just saying that Instagram is just you know King Kong in the situation right now. That's all. But That's a fact. Hopefully, on a quick sidebar, are there any like social media tips you would want to give to aspiring entrepreneurs? Because I know they look up to you guys for uh, insight. Yeah. Social media, yes, 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 yes. Consistency, extremely, extremely important. Originality, extremely, extremely important. Take time to study. Like I was actually having a conversation today with a principal of a school, high school, and I was telling him like, business schools are outdated. Like, MBA programs are outdated because there's no way that you can have an MBA program right now without having social media as part of the MBA program. It's one of the most vital things in marketing. So if you're not teaching the art, because it is an art and a science, don't ever let somebody discredit it. Like it's just. If, if it was that easy to build a million followers, everybody would have it. Mm -hmm. People true. people try to discredit things that they can't do themselves. And they just that try to, they like, oh, you're an influencer. You can say whatever you want. It's real people that's following and <laughs> real products that's being purchased and real money that's being made. So to master, to master the art of social media is extremely, extremely important. And part of that is staying up to date. Like you got to spend time on the apps. You got to spend time on the app you gotta actually know what's trending, what's not trending, when apps is going out of style, when other apps are coming in style. Very important. Um, new features, new updates. It's just like studying any other marketplace. Like it's 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 the world that we live in right now. So consistency, originality, and value add. That's always been our thing. Our, our thing has always been how can we add value? A lot of people go a lot of different other routes, but our thing is like, how can we add as much value as possible? And now it's even harder because now we got to do it in 60 second real format. We used to be able to do like IGTV, yeah. which three minutes, two and a half minutes. It's not easy to explain something in financial terms in 60 seconds. It's, it's actually extremely, it's, it's kind of hard. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's, 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 yeah. that's my biggest. Don't, like, don't breeze over that. Like talk about that. Like the difficulty it is to, to read something, to interpret it and to understand how to explain it to somebody so that they can get it. Like, yeah, that's a scale. It took me nine months to come up with two thousand right. index for people to be like, man, it's easy. I'm like, like it's a skill. No one prior put those yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, first you have to understand it and, uh -huh. and understand it and be able to teach it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just, we shouldn't just like gloss over that. That takes skill and it takes a lot of patience, right? Because some of these articles, a lot of times, especially like I'll, I'll read them and I'm sure you read them too. And it's like, I ain't grasped that the first time. Let me go back and read it. Okay, let me go do some research so I can clearly understand what this means. All right, bet. And then I know like when you do the video score, it's like, oh, he's fully grasped it because now he can yeah. explain this. I mean, people try, like I said, shout out to Nikki, but I never forget. Uh, shout, yeah, shout out to Nikki Sony. She, yeah. Nikki, Nikki uh, Minaj, I'm talking about, but oh, shout out to Nikki Hudo yeah. too. But uh, Nikki, I never forget her and Joe Biden had a little issue years ago and 
obviously they cool now, but she has said something, Joe, she said something in, in the vein of like, you know, um, just be a podcast, like try to just dismiss him as a podcaster. Well, Joe Rogan got a $200 million podcast. Dude, I don't know any rapper that's ever got that much money from, from their record label. So I say that to say, yeah, people sometimes try to dismiss what you're doing or, or minimize it or laugh it off. Um, but like I always say, everything is funny until it's not anymore. And, um, you know, now eventually the joke's on you. I five right there. That's yeah. like Kendrick. Ha ha. Ha. Yeah. Joke's on you. Joke's on you. So, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But like I said, that wasn't a shot at Nikki. I was just no, using no, that. No, no, no. I was just using that. We do not want that bar, Pete. Hey. Nah, nah, nah. Shout out. Nah, nah, nah. back in the you. city. It looked like she was back in the city last yeah. week. Fabio, Fabio Foreign. Lighting up the streets. The kid has New York right now. He has New York in a frenzy. And he's Boy, putting on for the city. Feeling like Baby Nas, AZ or something. Strong comparison. <laughs> Boy, on fire. <laughs> Boy, he's on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire. Boy. I can't. I was king of the York. Now he's in charge. Nah, he's, yeah, he held it down for the Pop Smoke's legacy. Yeah. And um, is carrying the torch. And he, yeah, he, he's bringing a lot of energy back to the city. I've seen the City Girls got a video with him. They all doing the dance. And um, I like it. I like the energy that, that yeah. is in New York right now. Think about his last three songs. Yeah. Kanye and Alicia Keys, and now you got Nicki, and I got the six. Like, I saw the features for his album. Bible, Bible. Ridiculous. Nah, ridiculous. Shout, shout out to Fabio, man. We got, we got to uh, connect with him. Ian, uh, yeah. yes. Want to talk about well TikTok? We brought TikTok, so let's talk about China a little, a little bit. Um, because you know, last week at the end of the week, we saw some of these Chinese stocks. It's crazy because we were you were trying to on last market Monday we were talking about what's Chinese stocks are relevant, and then on um, I believe it was Friday we saw a lot of Chinese stocks go up. So. The headline was this, all right? So China modified a decade-long rule that restricted offshore listed firms' financial data sharing practice, potentially removing the key hurdle for U.S. regulators to gain full access to auditing reports of a majority of the 200-plus Chinese companies listed in the New York Stock Exchange. So it pretty much grants the framework for U.S. to get full auditing reports for majority of those companies. Now, it brought me back to that Lucan situation, for those of you who are not familiar. Um, I sold my Lucan coffee uh, in about 2000. It was early 2019. I was like, this is company. I was reading all the reports on it. It was the hottest thing. Um, but we never got to see their financial reports. And they pulled the rug on us, right? They, they falsified their reports. The stock dropped 89% in a day. And it was a learning lesson. But what's happening now is that this, this is a, like a gateway for us to now to see what's happening inside some of these companies. What's the impact long-term event? I think it is a, well... I'm going to give the clean version first. <laughs> um, I think it's long overdue that they have the same kind of accounting practices that we do for publicly traded companies. Second part, just when they are getting close to be becoming the number one superpower in the world, if they begin to show strong financials, which still can be doctored, and they peg some of those earnings to crypto, and they begin to have higher gains than us. That's so why I ask if we ask if, if I care if we care about loyalty to where the asset is from last week, right? If they begin to produce higher gains than Tesla, Amazon, Google, and they can get us to take our money and invest more there, that will be like the final infinity stone that they need to push to becoming the number one superpower. So well played on both ends politically, but I think long, it's been long overdue on the public stock market to have fair kind of practices and the practices that we do for American uh, publicly traded stocks. China has a terrible human rights um, record. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. So I say that to say, not to generalize the whole entire country, obviously, but leadership in the country. And um, it's hard to, to trust somebody's business ethics mm -hmm. if you can't trust their, their human rights ethics. Have so, their human rights violations been to play devil's advocate? Please, God's advocate. God's advocate. As China has worse human rights violations than the United States of America, we're not going the Umar route. Just a quick look, <laughs> right? A little jab step, real quick. Well, China, uh, yeah, they got like they got like they got like concentration camps, for lack of a better word, in their own country for over a million Uyghurs. Uh, which is Chinese is an ethnic minority of Muslims. So I don't think America has that in in, in American land. And people so, are in right now. Huh? 
How many people in aggregate are in jails? Yeah, probably over a million people. A million, I think over like 1.2 1. million. 1.3 million. 1. 3 million. I always say Rick and Shane, Kanan and Ghost are both heroes and villains. It just depends who tells the tale. Ghost snitched on Kanan. How was Ghost a good guy? Because he put on them tight suit jackets like I used to. <laughs> I know in America, they're the same. They're brothers. They're the Joker and Batman. Joker didn't get the loving, nurturing family right. Uh, for all my DC comic fans, there's even some spinoffs. It's been like, well, maybe, you know, Joker and Batman are long lost relatives, right? America and China are two sides of the same coin. And a lot of things that China learned to do to their people, maybe they ascertain some of that information from how we treated our citizens. Mass incarceration, definitely an issue. America has 10% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prison population. Extremely disturbing statistic. If anybody has not read The New Jim Crow, mm -hmm. I highly recommend that you read that book. By Michelle right? Alexander, yes. please go get it. Excellent, excellent read. Excellent. And episodes you guys did on the, the, the bonds. Yeah, yeah. What's it? Private prison bonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, yeah, yeah. We're not letting America off the hook. They definitely have... Yeah, they have a lot of things to answer to, yeah. for sure. Yeah, go get that book. Also, if you haven't seen the documentary, The House I Live In, great documentary. Oh, that, let me write that down. I haven't seen it. Yeah, The House I Live In. It, it, it kind of, it's about the war on drugs, but it also talks about mass incarceration. Michelle, Michelle Alexander is actually in the movie, in the documentary. Mm -hmm. so go check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mass incarceration is something that we definitely have to um, work towards eradicating that issue. Um, Vanguard. <clears throat> Vanguard. I know you talk about Vanguard a lot. So um, yes. I don't work for them, but they got the spot to this segment. Uh, yes, Vanguard. 12, 12 Vanguard investments that you can use to make money uh, in every industry. Yeah. So a lot of times people are like, hey, I love the information. Sometimes it goes over my head. Can you just give me like a clear list of what to invest in? So you guys can write these down. Um, VOO is for the S&P 500. So that's 500 of the best companies. Um, VIG is for those of you who want dividends. Um, VGT is one of my favorites. That is their technology fund. Number four is VYM. That is their high yield fund. Uh, number five is VNQ, which is focused on real estate. Shout out to Matt. VTI is the total United States market. VUG is growth. VV is large cap. VO is mid cap, VTWO is small cap, and VCR is the uh, consumer discretionary. Only reason I like Vanguard because they have the lowest fee structure out of everyone available. So regardless of what industry you want to invest in, they have a fund available for you. Um, so VOO, VIG, VGT, VYM, VNQ, VTI, VUG, VV, VO, VTWO, and VCR are the 12 that you can invest in where you never have to like do all these reports and be in a basement, how me Troy and Rashad to be for like 12 hours straight looking at CNBC and trap, you know, looking at it all day. If you want an easy solution, uh, you'll have the investment portfolio that you need inside of one of those 12. They go the game right there, man. Yeah. Nothing else to talk about. Yeah, like I'm like, what else? Like Game, set, match. That's 12 right there. Vanguard, cut the check. Please. Be Please, and come on the show, long overdue. And Tony Robbins. He gonna make me stop promoting Money Master Game. My brother, <laughs> what are we doing? So <laughs> I'll walk on codes for you on Market Mondays, but come on, bro. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is 12 Vanguard funds from everything from real estate to high yield to technology to dividend appreciation, small cap, mid cap, large cap, growth, <laughs> consumer discretionary that you can invest in. And yes, Vanguard, they have low to no loads um, low fees. That's the, that's the thing. So, um, yeah, that's a blueprint yeah. to, to invest in. Yeah. So if somebody's like trying to figure out where should they start? Yeah. You could take a few of these and just start. Go ahead. Yeah, start. You can just do VGT and VTI and be good. Yeah. Do those two and be tech. tech go to the market. There you go. Really easy. Try to make it as easy as possible for you guys. Um, for free. The keyword free. <laughs> Free. People act like we charge for Market Mondays. Only some, small portion. We got to <laughs> focus on those that love us. 
Yeah. For those of you who say we don't do enough free, you put 90 minutes together. Try every Monday. Uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, the biggest lessons from last week for 19 keys. Um, can I, I'll just start really quick. Yeah, start. Y'all, y'all, y'all gonna go in. I, I, the biggest lesson I learned and I watched it happen is the creativity. How far creativity can take you? Mm-hmm. Like watching that process of him calling me, trying to figure out how to sell a ticket and then in an hour figuring out like, wait, there's a poster here. The amount of creativity that that he has and that he displays and hopefully encourages other people to, to come up with creative ways to maximize their potential. I think that's the biggest thing. And then we, we, sp- we spoke on like the two hours prior to, to Good Market Mondays. And you could just kind of hear his vision and the creativity just seeping out of his brain. It's incredible to watch, man. So that was my biggest takeaway from creativity can take you like to endless limits. Yeah. Dottie, what, what, what were yours? Uh, I would say as the far as- The ones you can say, not the secrets. Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> as far as, you know, 19 Key is a very calculated person. And I feel like, you know, um, when you look at people, that are figures in society, they're very calculated. Like you have Kanye West, everything that he does is very calculated as far as how he dresses, how he talks, how he moves, everything. It, it might seem like it's crazy, but he, it's well thought out. And um, Key's the same way, like, you know, whether you hate him or whether you love him, he's a very thought provoking, controversial person. He dresses all black with the crown, with the gloves, with the sunglasses. He's talking like, you know, uh, he says uh, the the catchphrase, you understand me all the time. Even the clip that he put up yesterday that I reposted about with Mike Rashid saying like, great clip. Men, men deserve women. Like it's a controversial clip. 50% is like hating it. 50% is loving it. Why was it controversial? Well, the people that was disagreeing with it was saying like, um, you know, I'm tired of hearing about men telling other men what to do. And just because you don't have, you can't provide for a woman doesn't mean that you don't deserve a woman. And, you know, that type There's of- There's more than one way you can provide though. Yeah. You I know. think he listened to them all too. He yeah. did. I listened, watched it three times. <laughs> yeah, emotionally. Physically. Emotionally, time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's just one of these things. Like me personally, I probably would have never said that. Because, you know what I'm saying? That's not- but I understand. What would your take have been? Because you know, you're the great diplomat. I'm yeah, not I would, crazy. I want to say the other side of it. Go ahead. Yeah, I stay away from, you know, that, that, but I understand the value. I understand the value in viral moments. I understand the value in thought provoking. And it's not just like controversial for no reason. It's actually a good controversial topic yeah. that is thought provoking and is important. It, it is important to talk about the role of a man, the role of a woman, the role of relationship. It's important to have that dialogue. Yeah. Um, but I understand that everything that he does is extremely, extremely calculated. calculated. And um, so me just observing him and just watching him, I'm like, okay, you know, I could just learn, I learned different things and it, it's just, you know, it's, it's marketing. It's marketing yeah. lessons that I, I learn every time that I, I watch him. Yeah. Creativity, Troy, Rashad calculation for me. He actually gave a strategy um, financially. So to, to pair so study everything on Web3, especially if it's been written by anybody at Andreessen Horowitz. Um, pair that knowledge with use of DAO and with crypto swing trading. So like, I think sometimes people hear the strategies and they'll separate them. I think the real value is to combine them to make them a superpower. So Web3 in a nutshell for me is like paying or like a royalty model to have audience monetize as you grow, great. Now, if you combine that with crypto, everyone should invest long term. Trading has considerable risk, but if you get the swing trading part down inside of a DAO, that's almost like a micro or mini hedge fund, right? So I think many people glance over that part of it. He actually gave a small blueprint of what to do like when you left the episode. So for those who missed it, learn everything you can about Web3. Um, combine long-term investing in stocks and crypto swing trader inside of a DAO, and you can have a great impact on society or your friends and family. Yeah, and he's extremely knowledgeable. So that's another thing. You just can't be a character and not know anything. Like he's created, he's created an aura for himself. But outside of that, he actually knows a lot, mm-hmm. and he can right. add a lot of value when he speaks. So that's part of it. If you're thinking about building your persona, 
it's okay to build the persona, but even Kanye West, like Kanye West is one of the greatest of all time. Like it's not just his antics that people like, you know, find interesting. It's the music that actually, you know, solidified his spot. So think about that. Like it always got to, you always got to add value. And then the other stuff is just kind of like added on. Isn't the high, that the high level conversation Mike and 19 was having? I've been working on the segue. <laughs> Cause I, like you have to give value first and provide something in order to even get, and I'm not, fellas, I'm not saying like going out and just actively tricking. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> you have to have a certain, at least genus qual or like swag Ooh. stuff, something. Ooh, man. Yeah, nah, it's important. Cause the red pill movement, like, and whatever you guys want to do, I'm cool. Shout out to my guy, Steph is cold, but I feel like a lot of people that are in that red pill movement. What, what is this? Red pill. So it's like being aware of how like dating dynamics really work, right? And I feel there's a lot of people talking about how to date, but then it becomes like a big cipher of like bashing women. So it's like, you have guys talking to guys on YouTube about how to pick up women and guys talking about it don't have women. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, no, no BS. Like, I saw a text, it was on Twitter. A dude literally texted a girl, like, after he met on a date nap, like, voice noted it. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm not interested in even paying for your meal unless we have sex first. So, if you're not interested, this is his first message to her. I said, bruh, I don't know what book you read, but you're not going to get far going that route. Like, you never know. You never know. He that he wasn't in that calendar. <laughs> Some of us in a certain echelon to pull that off. He was not. He was not. First things first. Talk about seven. Is, hey, he's not the <laughs> third player. Listen, if you got it like that, you oh, have man. to say it. Maybe come through first, then we go eat. Oh. <laughs> nah, it's an interesting. Nah, it's real talk. It's real talk. It's an interesting dynamic. Um and Keys is a perfect person that, to have those kind of conversations because yeah. he, he fits in so many different vibes. Buckets. You know what I'm saying? He fits in so many different buckets. Crypto one day, relationship specialist one day, civil rights leader one day. To me, yeah, university. Yeah. After day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's yeah. doing like acting. I can see him being an actor, you know, fashion. He does the whole fashion thing. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Check out. High level conversations with 19 yes. yeah. on EYO network. Smash hit off to a smash start. Yes. Yeah. Number one entrepreneur podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good guy right there, man. Yeah. Shout out to Keys. Um, okay, let's get into this question. What is the one thing you wish you knew uh in business four years ago that you know now? I know it's a tough one. It's always tough to pare down a one. Oh man, that's tough. Uh, I guess something that I would, I mean, I, everything that's happened, it, it happens as a per, at this perfect time, right? Like I think everything in life prepares us for these moments. Um, I think one of those things that had I known, I think it could have streamlined things. I mean, I think we're doing great, respectfully, um, is having systems. Right? Like nobody teaches you about systems inside of business, right? Everybody wants to have a successful business and everybody wants to be do great, but nobody ever tells you exactly what steps are needed to achieve these things. And there's really no, they, I mean, for us, it wasn't a mental. We kind of just figured things out as we go. Obviously, Charlie has a finance background from education. So business formation wasn't something that we knew. We just kind of learned. Um, so I guess that would be something. Um, but being said, that being said, it's like, I'm happy that we did because we got to, it forced us to learn, right? And that made us better entrepreneurs, that made us better leaders uh, and, and better, better businessmen. Yeah. Um, Heidi, what about you? I know it's a tough question. Yeah, for sure. One thing that I wish I would have knew four years ago that I know now, um, you know, just uh, success love speed. And you just, you know, you just got to act on it. Whatever you, whatever you got in your mind, just act on it right away. It doesn't really matter if it works out or not. Elon Musk, they had this whole grand thing for this Tesla truck, the armored truck. And they threw a, a ball and said the windows was indestructible and it broke the window. It was a whole laughing stock thing. Long story short, the truck still hasn't come out. 
and nobody cares. That's what I realized that yeah. you have to minimize your failures and maximize your achievements. When you when you win, you gotta like maximize that. And when you lose, you just act like nothing happened. You learn from it, but you just sweep it under the rug, act like it never happened, and then move on. That happens all the time. Apple's had failures. Elon Musk has had failures, but they don't they don't harp on it. They're not magnifying it, right? Move on. And when you win, make sure that everybody is aware of your win. The victory. Yeah. Victory. Yeah. Basically, that's 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 my biggest. Jay Z has had albums that didn't do well. Like you know, what I mean, he's had songs that didn't do well. Royce apparently thinks he has a bunch of them. Shout out my guy Royce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a few that I haven't heard yet. Myself. Unreleased tracks. Yeah. So Unreleased to. tracks. <laughs> Shout out to him. So that would be my biggest takeaway, man. Just, just do it. Just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. As a follow-up question, how many tasks roughly do you guys get done a day individually? Uh, man, I used to be a lot better with my to-do list. Now, you know, I delegate a lot, um, honestly. Uh, between like Abdullah, shout out to Abdullah, yeah, shout, to to shout out to my sister, who's my personal manager of my life. Um, I try to delegate as much task as possible and only yeah. really try to do the stuff that that's what I learned too early in business is you should only be doing the stuff that only you should do. Everything else, you should pay somebody else to do. That's a scaling model. You try and do too many things and you're going to stay small. You have to pay other people. As soon as you get enough money, reinvest that money into people. Pay whatever, yeah. whatever somebody else can do, pay them to do it. Meaning, like somebody else can answer emails, somebody else can file paperwork, somebody else can go to the store for you. Every single thing almost in life, 95%, somebody else can do. There's some things that other people can't do for you. Like we right now with the personalities of this show are us three, unless we just, you know, have somebody else come in and then we just become a producers. This is what we need to do. Even like content. I have other people that make content, but there's some content that I need to still make myself because nobody else can actually do it the way I want it to be done. Yeah. So the few things that nobody else can do, focus your energy on that. Everything else, Delegate. Great lesson. Great lesson. That's a powerful lesson. Uh, how many tasks? I don't know, man. I, 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 and we had this conversation the other day on the phone. You know, I was like, the things that nobody's thinking about doing, that's what I'm kind of doing. Yeah. So there's no glorifying it. It's just like these things need to be done. And I, can, I think, like, amongst the three of us, uh, myself, Mike, and Shadi, like, we all kind of know what we're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? So some things like we can delegate, but some things are our responsibilities. And so, like, if, if there's a question that I have, about content that I know to go to. If there's anything that involves like ad placements and money, they know like, all right, well, I'm tracking that for us. And if there's anything that involves like tech, we know who we're going to. And so there's certain things that we're just going to do on a daily basis. I don't, there's no number for it. Whatever has to be done is getting done. And I think that that's the value of partnerships also, where it's like you said, like him and Mike, they're, they're much more on a technical side. Like they track, I don't even look at the revenue. I, I just ask them like what revenue, how much revenue came in from YouTube this month. I don't really be looking at it. What I, cause I feel like I'm more of a creative and I have to, I have to be able to be in a creative zone. So sometimes like I could just spend hours just thinking or going to brunch with somebody, having a conversation. These are things that is actually extremely important, right? But it's like, I have to have time to be a, the creative. I, I'm not saying it's on the genius. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the creative. Yeah. So it's hard to be the creative and the business. We, we wear both hats, all of us. Yeah. Because yeah. we're talent. most of the time the talent is just the talent, and then the business guys run it. But we're the talent and we're the business side. But that's not easy to do. So yeah. being that we're talent and we still have to be creative, I have to just focus on being creative a lot of times. And so I delegate a lot of the other stuff. And then Troy. And Mike, they do like the 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 day to day operations, and um, I could just take walks in the park and just you know let them think. <laughs> the time yeah. is needed, but that is think it, tanks it, are needed. It, it's important, like even that. Like I don't, I remember I told that story early on. Like I was trying to create create content. I was just like, why am I doing this? Like just send them the content, let them do that. 
let me go find something else. So like when I said, like business, if I knew the systems, I had to learn these things. I had to learn how to, to actually figure out how the business works. What is your role going to be in this business, right? And making sure that everything is streamlined to make sure that we ain't missing anything. So like that was a process in itself. Because the way he creates is not like the way he creates now is not the same way he used to create. Like he's always evolving how he's creating. So even learning that, I was like, all right, well, he's not interested in those things anymore. What is the content is about us. And so like, yeah, let's scale back on how many things we send because like his creative process has changed. Just learning that, like not even talking to him, but just learning it, how the, the creative process is looking. I'm like, all right, I'm studying. I see how he's moving. I see how he's moving. I bet. Let me scale back on those things. Let's focus on this. So Have you read the book, the, the One Thing? That's one of my favorite books. I have that Gary Teller. Who wrote it? Uh, Gary Teller. Yeah, um, is it right here in my book list? All right, check it out. The, the, the biggest oh. lesson is like focus on the one thing that will have the biggest impact on your business or life over the next 10 years and like cut everything else away. That's what for me, like spent all my time looking at charts, finding ways to get better entries because I know if I can master that, everything else flows. But I think you make a great point. Like you need time away to be able, that's why like, even when Kanye went to Wyoming and he used to go to Hawaii to record the album, you need those moments to be able to just think. Yeah. Yeah, for everyone in corporate, like, you notice they tie you up in all those, like, meetings that mean nothing, the email chains. That's to stop you from thinking of your exit plan and how to get away. So please carve out at least one or two hours a day just to brainstorm on a business on how to be better. That's a fact. Yeah. And shout out to my wife. She's going to kill me. <laughs> she allows me to actually do all those things that I'm doing. Because, like, like I said, she's home making sure that everything is right here, which obviously frees up my mind to say, I don't have to worry about that because I know we're taking care of. And she works with the company too, so shout out to her. Our anniversary is coming up. I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Don't kill me. So what's the, what's the, what's it for you? Um, find ways to give more while using automation to help. And then part two would probably be um, find an indestructible business model. I think I finally like crack that you, you touched on it like on us being executives that that is talent and also can write checks for talent but i think given this upcoming recession most and even when apple going to a subscription model it just really showed even they are worried about revenue top line revenue and sustainability i think everyone needs to hunker down more on finding a model that even in the worst case scenario, you'll be okay. One of my old mentors used to tell me like, you have to be able to make big money even in a bad economy with small numbers. Um, the only concern I have for Netflix is the amount of debt that they have. And it's like, how long, they had a small price increase and people went crazy. I'm like, is it a lot of money to pay 14 bucks a month opposed to going to the movies and paying 150 on average? But the value chain is not equal. Um, and I think the companies that will create those indestructible business models will do the best over these next hundred years. So those are like the two major takeaways. Like find ways to give more at scale and then make sure I focus on building an indestructible business model. Bravo. There you have it, Bravo. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Market Mondays gave a gave a, a vast blueprint um, from everything that uh, you need to really get up and running. We talked about ETFs. We talked about the 12 different Vanguard lineups. We talked about inverted yield curve. We talked about politics, talked about recession. We talked about, man, Apple. Other relationships. Facebook. <laughs> TikTok. Facebook, TikTok. <sighs> Shout out to my boy, Taylor. Chuck. G Hold on, let me get the mic out the way. GBA. Can you go to, to the Instagram and see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's my, support. my brother. Um, super proud of him and uh, what, he, what he's been able to build from our community. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really dope to just see the growth and progression. So, and it's actually really good fabric also, yeah. um, most importantly. So yeah, we rocking it, the, the Grime Build Achieve apparel. So go to Instagram, it's Grime Build Achieve underscore apparel, grindbuildachieve.com. Yep. And um, yeah, GBA is a movement. So, you know, that's what we rocking right now. Um, all, all vibes, all vibes, all vibes yeah. man. Shout out to our brother. Shout out you, to the guy. I mean, we talking about, when you talk about mentorship, you talk about brotherhood. You, this this young man, I remember my first job, I was a camp counselor and uh, he was in my group and when he was in fourth grade. So he's like nine years old. And uh, you know, for over 20, 20 plus years now. 20, so we've watched him grow from 
a child, a teenager, young man, man, to a businessman now. So shout out to Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to- Go support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GBA, what up? Spanx, what up? Shout out to Reefy too. Yo, Reef, what's up, uh, man? So this hat, this hat, <sighs> beautiful nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about beautiful it. Beautiful nightmares. Talk about is, that. Is, is the vibes from my my cousin, um, and you know, definitely proud of, of what he's been able to do as well. Shout out to my son for always repping the beautiful nightmares. Him and my son's son is best friends. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's dope to see the entrepreneurs doing their thing, and um, you know, anytime that we get to show love to entrepreneurs. It's all love. You so we, we and we appreciate the merch that we get. We get a lot of merch from different people, and uh, you know, as long as it fits, as long as it fits, and it's yeah. and my it's bad. Good <laughs> if it's good drip and it fits, I will be I will be wearing your merch. Yeah. That's a fact, and especially if it's from here. When, it's, when it comes from Greenberg, we, we definitely put it on. What, what's we he's on? Um, uh, old Martyr. Yeah. But but way. yeah, man, uh, you know, like I said, I support all of the entrepreneurs because I know that it's hard. I know it's not easy to um start a, you know, whether whether it's an app, whether it's a clothing brand, whether it's a podcast, never let somebody minimize your accomplishments. If you started a business, that's an accomplishment within itself. Because most people will never even start a business. So no matter what you no matter what you do at that point, at the very least, you're already a winner in my eyes because you took the steps to actually get a business up and running. Uh, the vast majority of people in life will never even start a business at all. So the fact that you even started the business means that you actually already surpassed 99% of the population. So you're already a winner and you can't lose. I also always say you can't lose if you started with nothing. It's only a learning experience. Everything is going to work out for you. But the key is to learn, grow, build, and keep going. It's, it's, it's never over till it's over. The goal is to grind, build, achieve. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, grind, grind, build, achieve. Just what up? Shout out to Just. Shout out to the whole team over there, man. They, they doing their thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yo, and we, we got to give Shadi his flowers. We got to give it Shadi his flowers, all right? I know y'all see what sneakers up there behind me. Oh, yeah. You see the two I albums called, that are behind me. I called it. I called it. They playing for the chip now, so uh, I obviously it. we. I, I don't have to take your pick. You already got North Carolina. Um, they, they, yo, they in the chip, bro. So well, the thing, the crazy thing is, um, was random. Before the tournament started, I said that North Carolina was going to be a national champion. I should have, I should have put money on it casually. And, and they're the AC, so that wasn't even like a that wasn't like an obvious choice. Nah, they, they're yeah. AC, um, but I believe in Tar Heel Nation. Shout out to RJ Davis. From our neighborhood. That's a fact. Oh, um, is he really? Okay. He is. Yes, he is. I, I, I've seen him grow up. Like, I know his dad. His dad is actually a referee. His dad, his dad's <laughs> a funny guy. And um, I, I saw RJ since he was a little kid. And to see That's his amazing. growth, to see his growth. And to see, yeah, to see where he's at now is amazing. So, um, just like just like we saw Donovan Mitchell grow up. That's a fact. Same thing. He's from our neighborhood also. That's so. a fact. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, I'm yep. talking like grow up, grow up, like yeah, watching yeah. like six years old. The crazy thing is I had a summer league. I used to run a summer league tournament. Where I was the commissioner of the summer league tournament. Fact. And um, Donovan played in that tournament. Like I was the commissioner and I'm watching him and I'm like, this kid got big feet. He was like 11 years old, wore like a size 14. <laughs> is um, that pause worthy in New York or what? What the guns are they going to um, No, 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 we good on that. No. We good on that. I'm still learning. Oh, <laughs> uh, but did you see Dr. Karazi yesterday? Oh, what she did? Oh, I'll show you. That was crazy. That was crazy. Um, I know she did the game with Sue Bird. I, I see. That was crazy. Yeah, they they, yeah. they paused it. Yeah, crazy, crazy. <laughs> she did it on purpose. Yo, now nah, the illest pause of all time has to be Spike Lee. This. Oh, I, I, I got. We'll I it on camera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now nah, we saw him grow up. So RJ definitely um, proud of him and everything that he's been able to accomplish. So. I'll be rooting for North Carolina. Shout out to shout out to Tar Heel Nation. Yeah, shout out to them. Shout shout out to the Blue Bloods of North Carolina. And I always like their colors, and, sky and blue. You see what we got up there? I was gonna put the Columbia Blues up there, the, the 11s, but shout out to uh, Ashley. She actually picked those up for me. Appreciate also, you. also, it's the and we got Cole. Don't let's not discount Cole. Cole's J Cole, up J Cole, one of the greatest rappers of all time, one of yeah. the greatest lyricists of all time. Yeah, and he's only getting better. He's actually getting better. Bro. Um, it was the start of Ramadan also. It's a fact. So shout out to everybody out there that's fast. I've been fasting since I was 11 years old. 
So um, it's definitely not easy to to fast for 30 days, but it is a good, it, it's a good, it's a good practice actually. Um, it has medical benefits and spiritual benefits as well. So um, yes, shout out to everybody all over the world that is taking part in Ramadan as fasting. Um, you know, hopefully you have a, a easy fast and um, you know, everything that you that you get out of it is, is a blessing. So yeah. definitely for sure. Yeah, yeah, prayers up. Um, yo, I'm telling you, man, that, that was the first time like, he was 14 years old when we were playing ball growing up and he would fast during the basketball season. It, it was it was tough. I was just like, yo, you good? You gonna be able to make it? <laughs> like, we have practice, I'm like, damn, bro. I don't know how you do it, but discipline, this, that's, that's what discipline can do for you. Yeah, yeah, it definitely teaches you discipline. That's a willpower discipline. And um, there's a lot of a lot of things that that comes with that. So yeah, 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 for sure. So definitely wanted to acknowledge that. Reefy, his Instagram is R dot M O E R T A underscore. Shout out to um, and then the Instagram beautiful uh nightmares clothing underscore. So shout out to Reefy and shout out to everybody out there, man. Um yeah, shout out to Howard University. That's a fact. Just wrapped up, just wrapped up a, a, a wonderful day on, on the yard. We appreciate Chris Latt, uh, Ocean, the whole team at Howard. Um, big, 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 big for us, EYL University to go to Howard University is something that we don't take lightly. Howard University is the Mecca when it comes to HBCUs and higher education, um, you know, a prestigious institution that has uh, you know, graduated some of our greatest minds and greatest thought leaders um, in the last hundred years. So shout out to, to the Bison, HU. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we, we can grace more, more college campuses to come. We, yeah. we are looking forward to touching college campuses all over. We're not, we were never anti-college. It was yeah. just a matter of just reforming the education system. Yeah, shout out to uh, the HBCUs out there. I know Chris Paul, Chris Paul was just appointed the head of the advisory board from President Biden. Support um, black colleges. Really? Shout, shout, out, to our, shout and, out to our guys. Yeah, and support black colleges as well. Yeah, shout out so to our guys. We'll, we'll see what, what he does with that appointment. Shout out to Chris Paul. Yeah. All right. All right, folks. So, Ernest, Red Panda Family, we want to let you know before we go about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally is a leading fi digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focus on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Uh, get with allies so that you can save, invest, and spend on things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we're all better off with an ally. Shout out to the good folks at Ally, our team over there. Shout out to our UM team, uh, Ryan, John. You know, those are our guys. <laughs> shout out to them. Dave, what up? Um, shout out to them. Happy belated birthday to my brother, Shiggy. Shig, um, Shiggaville. And rest in peace to our stylist, Mike B. His, his dad passed away. So not only, um, the whole family actually is part of EYL. So Mike B's our stylist. His brother, Paul, does security for us. Mm -hmm. that, that's in Atlanta. That's, that's um, our security in Atlanta. And, and then his other brother, Greg, is an NFL agent who's actually been on EYL as well. He's an EYL alumni. So one brother's an EYL alumni. Other brother, EYL security. Other brother is EYL stylist. And we actually grew up with their sister as yeah. well. So what up, Camille? Dad passed away. So you know, send my condolences to the family, thoughts and prayers, and um, you know, cherish the time that you have with your parents because obviously nobody lives forever. So it's extremely important that you know take advantage of those moments while you have them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and happy birthday to my mom. Her birthday is this week. I know you don't want to put the date happy, out, happy, but happy, happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday. It's, lit. it's lit. Turn up. It's lit. <laughs> <laughs> have some fun. Love you. You're going up. <laughs> it's lit it's lit um all right guys tomorrow jack jones uk Ooh. london Ooh. um we, we we this is big this is a big one <laughs> uh, appreciate y'all stay safe out there we'll see you next week execute love love to be happy deserve to be rich execute love y'all peace <laughs>